Hello everyone. My name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And I'd like to talk to you a bit today on how religion intertwines with Freemasonry. Now this is a subject that you can find all sorts of conspiracy theories, ill-advised sermons, and also reasons on why people should not join the Masons, just scattered across the internet and publications everywhere. But I think that there's a reason behind this. You see, Freemasons use some pretty generic terms when it comes to God. We will say the word God, but we also say deity and great architect of the universe. We also say that we have holy books on the altars of our lodges. But at the same time, we'll tell you that we are not a religion or a replacement for religion. So how can an organization exist that has both of those things happening? Well, I think the important thing for you to understand is that Freemasonry is a worldwide organization. And because of that, it touches almost every culture and creed that is out there. And how can you have an organization that requires a religious belief, but at the same time would try to force you into a certain religious belief? See, instead, Freemasonry separates itself from that and says, if you believe in God, then that's good enough for us. And there's some other requirements as well. But on the most general stance, if you can profess a belief in deity, that's the, the first step in being able to be a Mason. So rather than trying to intermingle with the individual creeds, Freemasonry says, we will accept that you believe in deity and we'll move forward from there. So exactly how can something like that work? Well, if you think about it and look back at history, it's actually the times where a certain belief in deity is prescribed or forced on a group of people that you end up with contentions and wars. And Freemasonry is all about brotherhood and truth and trust in each other. So we couldn't have that kind of environment happen inside of a Masonic Lodge. So then what exactly are you going to find in a Masonic Lodge? Well, if you're interested in joining Freemasonry, the best thing I can tell you is that it doesn't hurt to ask. As you start to petition a lodge, all you have to do is ask them what holy book do they have in their lodge. And you might actually run into several different answers. You see, each lodge is governed by a Grand Lodge. And that Grand Lodge may grant certain authorities or might also restrict certain things to their subordinate lodges. Here in Mississippi, for example, it is going to be the Bible, the Christian Bible. However, in other jurisdictions, there might be some restrictions for a certain book, but more often than not, you're actually going to have a more wide spectrum available to you. You might be able to choose the Bible, the Quran, the Veda, or other holy books, depending on your personal choice or that of the lodge in general. You see, because Freemasonry is worldwide, each lodge is more likely to be centric around whatever creed is popular or uh, predominant, rather, locally. So here in Mississippi, Christianity being the predominant religion, you'll find the Holy Bible. However, in other places, you'll find other books. It may have other books simply available to you, where another brother may uh, use the Bible, uh, a brother in the same lodge might use the Quran. And that is all just based on what stipulations are made by the Grand Lodge. So then what does all that really mean? Well, it means that Freemasons recognize the same God that any person outside of Freemasonry might recognize. So if you're not a Mason right now, and you're Christian, and you recognize God, you recognize the same God that I do. But when I go inside of a Masonic Lodge, I might have a brother visiting from another area who might uh, profess a belief through the Veda or another religion. And as such, to make sure that there's harmony inside of the Lodge, we're going to use some general terms, like deity, or great architect of the universe. Now, great architect of the universe is a term that we could probably have a whole other video on. But to summarize it quite generally, an architect of the universe. Just imagine what that means. An architect builds, creates, establishes something. And obviously, with the title 
great architect or even grand architect of the universe. We're talking about the one, the highest, the best architect of the entire universe. So it's our way of having a, or the fraternity's way of having a title that can be spread across all of Freemasonry that doesn't limit one to have to recognize how they understand deity, just the fact that deity exists and that they have reverence to that deity. Okay. So, another thing I'd like to mention, is something else that I've seen in videos scattered across the internet, is a difference to the titles that are used inside of the lodge, especially that of Worshipful Master. These people say that that's the linchpin of the whole thing right there. How can we have a person with the title Worshipful Master and try to say we don't that, that we worship God? Obviously, we worship that person and not a deity. But really what we run into is a, a misunderstanding of what the word Worshipful actually means. Now, before you think I'm just you know, flapping my jaw here, take the 30 seconds that it would require to open a dictionary or to go and search the internet for the word worshipful. And I can tell you that in Merriam-Webster's dictionary, you're going to find the first definition as being notable or distinguished. Now, you will also notice that those definitions, while they are the first ones mentioned, are noted as being archaic. But that stands to reason, because in Freemasonry we're talking about an organization that's hundreds of years old, archaic by definition. So, if you actually keep reading through the definitions, at least in the Merriam-Webster uh, version of uh, the, de the definition for worshipful, you're only going to find one definition that even makes you think of a religious sense of worship. Instead, we're talking about a person being notable or being distinguished. You see, the master of a lodge has been elected by all the other members of the lodge to serve in that position. He has been distinguished as a member of the Lodge and is therefore given the title of Worshipful Master. So, we just have a misunderstanding on the proper use of a certain word. In fact, as I mentioned, every time that a Freemason mentions God or Deity or Great Architect of the Universe or any of the other titles that we use, we are talking about the same God that any person in that creed that you share outside of the Lodge would recognize. So again, what I'd like to actually uh, ask you to do here is down below the video I'm going to share a link and that is to a public document that I've typed up where I share a little more detail in this thought. The last video that I made about the secrets of Freemasonry or whether Freemasons are secret I wasn't too happy with how that came out. I read off the screen because I was worried about how I'd be able to manage my thoughts and I didn't want to get too far off track because the topic is just so vast. But it came out way too dry. So this time I'm going to talk to you like I have a little more off the cuff and ask you to go read all the details in the document. You can either leave a comment to this video below or you can even leave a comment to the document itself over on that web page. Whatever you do, would you please consider sharing this video so that your friends can learn a little more about Freemasonry as well. Subscribe so that you can get email notifications for the next time we put out a video. That will save you the trouble of having to check back all the time to see when a new video is posted. appreciate you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.